good Wednesday evening, everyone. We're back with weather for Weather Geeks. Air quality, wildfire smoke, of course, top of mind, not only here locally, but in most of the uh, northeastern U.S., the mid-Atlantic states as well. No doubt by now, if you've paid any attention to, well, anything <laughs> over the last 24 hours, you've seen some of the apocalyptic-looking scenes across the uh, the East Coast, especially New York City, uh, a lot of the webcam images have been just extraordinary today. It looks like the surface of Mars at times. This is a, a look on uh, look at uh, the webcam that's uh, based, I believe, near the Statue of Liberty, uh, looking towards the World Trade Center and the southern tip of Manhattan. Uh, you can see how low the visibility is there in New York City this evening, and it's been like that all day today. Uh, the visibility uh, down to a mile or so in many places due to this smoke moving through. Uh, it's improved some back in western New York and in northern PA, but still pretty bad. Eastern PA, New Jersey, heading over towards uh, New York City as well. Locally, we've actually seen a little bit of a reduction in the uh, particulates in the air today. In other words, the air quality has actually improved here locally today. Uh, after starting out uh, pretty bad this morning, uh, we've seen generally speaking some improvement over the last several hours unfortunately though this is kind of a temporary thing as we're expecting a reduction in air quality again overnight into our thursday and especially into thursday night and friday unfortunately the data is not loading into this graphic but yeah we're, we're kind of in a little slice of nice here locally uh, but uh, that will probably change though over the next 24 to 36 hours we'll be watching as we go into thursday night and especially into friday morning Another plume of smoke coming out of uh, the origin site of these wildfires north of, of the Montreal area. And this time, instead of kind of doing one of these numbers to the southeast, this is going to be a little more due north-south, the trajectory of the smoke plume. And it could be pretty thick. Now, I wouldn't guarantee that we're going to have scenes that look like uh, New York City today, um, Friday. But it's going to be possible that we'll have some pretty low visibility and you might be able to smell the smoke and the air quality could be uh, pretty bad during the first half of the day on Friday. So worst case scenario, this is one of those things that is just not hazardous for people in sensitive groups, people with asthma, respiratory issues. This you know, has the potential to be a serious situation for even healthy individuals Friday morning if that plume is as thick as it's currently modeled, if it takes the same track as currently modeled. Um, this you know, could be one of the worst air quality days we've seen in quite some time around uh, our area. We had uh, some thick smoke, but it was mostly a loft back in the summer of 2020, I believe, 2021, a couple of years ago. Um, I think it was 21. We had some thick smoke, but uh, it really was stayed pretty aloft. And of course, we've had smoke aloft at times over the last couple of weeks. Um, maybe not as thick as we had a couple of years ago in that, in that uh, late summer event. But uh, the overall air quality could be as low on Friday as we've seen in quite some time in eastern Ohio and western PA. One uh, topic uh, with when it comes to these wildfires and any kind of extreme weather is the ties to climate change, thanks to our partners at Climate Central for this uh, graphic, basically showing the change in the number of hot, windy, and dry days across the U.S. in recent decades. And no surprise, especially in the West, we've seen a pretty dramatic increase in those kinds of days. So while we can't say that this particular event, yes, absolutely because of climate change. No, most fires are started by humans. Um, but the number of fires and their ability to spread faster and have bigger impacts, definitely increasing in a warming world where the fuels on the ground are more available, there, there's more dryness, and you can see more of these types of events in, in a warming world. Again, can we say you know, the eastern Canada wildfires that are spreading all the smoke into the U.S. Uh, today and this week are directly because of climate change? No, we can't make that attribution, but we can say that uh, a warming world certainly loads the dice in favor of more events of this magnitude. Otherwise, today, a little on the cool side, uh, with a high of 73. 77 is par for the course at this time of the year. And another cool morning. We'll have another cool morning coming up tomorrow. Uh, we haven't had to blast the air conditioning at night with this dry air mass. Dew points are in the lower 30s, so those overnight lows have no trouble getting well down into the 40s. All right, so on our Thursday, we also have a trough of low pressure that will be pivoting through. And while I don't think it's going to rain much, it's possible you see a sprinkle before the afternoon is through. Nothing of significance, nothing that's going to bust the emerging drought for sure. But it's possible that you'll witness a couple of raindrops here and there before Thursday is through. Same idea Friday. Another one of these troughs of low pressure will, like spokes on a wheel, it'll continue p 
pivoting around that parent low pressure system or, or counterclockwise spin up over uh, the Maritimes, uh, the Canadian Maritimes, I should say. And with this setup, yeah, there could be a sprinkle maybe Friday. No big deal otherwise, and I think Saturday will be a pretty decent start to the weekend with temperatures in the upper 70s. But we do have more promising weather in the rain department coming our way by the end of the weekend and especially into early next week. I think the rain chances overall will be highest during the daylight hours on Monday. You can see right now they're kind of, you know, in the 40 to 60 percent range or getting there uh, in subsequent forecasts as we have more consistency amongst the models with, in regards to the timing of, of any uh, weather features. I would expect uh, Monday's rain chances to probably go up in subsequent forecasts. And you know, I think there'll be a couple of more opportunities for wet weather as we go deeper into next week. Uh, the moisture increases late in the weekend into Monday. And then uh, probably re a little bit of a reduction in, in the moisture during midweek. Under that upper low, though, even though the moisture content of the atmosphere will not be very high, if we have this upper low spinning around, underneath this, it'll probably be fairly unstable. And maybe there's a couple of showers during midweek. That will probably start to push out to the east later in the week and uh, another pronounced surge of moisture towards the tail end of next week probably means a decent chance for some wet weather. In general, the jet stream will, will amplify again towards the end of next week and a ridge will probably start to build and that means uh, not only will there be some rain chances at the end of next week, I would suspect it'll get pretty warm at the end of next week and into Father's Day weekend. Uh, I suspect we'll spend some time well up into the 80s and maybe close to 90 in kind of that uh, 6 to 12 day period into next week into the following weekend. All right, lots to keep track of, even though we haven't seen a drop of rain in weeks. No shortage of interesting things to talk about, as always, here on Weather for Weather Geeks on the Storm Tracker 21 app on all of our social media outlets. As well, we'll keep you uh, up to date on what to expect as re with regards to the uh, smoke by Friday morning, any rain chances over the next several days, and much, much more. Thank you for watching on this Wednesday evening.